Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is another Belief Buffet dish at Hug Nation. So, I want to talk today about the joy of temporary. I have never owned a home. I have always rented. And as a renter, I've always been aware that I'm only going to live there for a period of time. It's temporary. I don't own the place. I'll be moving out eventually. So I am the kind of person that will move into a place, get a bed set up, place to sit, and leave a lot of boxes unpacked. I mean, excuse me, leave the boxes packed. Um, you know, I might even use some bins or boxes as tables, throw a sheet over it and put something on top of it, ta-da, <laughs> table. I will put, take my art and lean it against the wall for months and months. I just, there's something, you know, psychologically about the investment to create a place that I want to live and is comfortable when I know I'm just going to have to take it all down. Which is fine, as long as I'm living by myself. But uh, I am practicing the art of cohabitation. Uh, one could have noticed that I practiced this art um, with a little hesitation, but so many lessons from this practice. And as we were kind of forced to move into a new place, a place that we know is going to be temporary, the owners are, have said, hey, you're welcome to stay, we're going to give you a nice deal on rent, but we're going to sell it as soon as we have the opportunity to do so after certain things happen. And so that even increases my desire to just like, eh, whatever, eh, whatever. But my partner, Becca, is not wired like I am. She will move into a room on a month-to-month basis, and she'll paint the walls. You know, she will decorate, she'll drill, and just like make the, she'll spend a significant amount of time, to me, Embracing the art of creating a space. And, you know, honestly, I was a little bit like, ugh, like a little judgmental. A little bit felt like it's wasteful. A little bit like, um, what's the point? And, but I realized in the last place that we moved into together, after a couple months, I really enjoyed the structure. I really enjoyed that we had places for everything. We had hooks that she put up for stuff. I mean, I helped, but she directed me. I wouldn't have done it on my own. Um, and there's beautiful art on the wall, and we have got certain art that we liked. We got it framed, and we put all this effort into creating a space, and and even buying furniture that was that we that would that she would say, hey, it would be great if we had this, that would do this and this. And I'm like, what, I mean, why don't we just use what we got to, to it'll, it'll do as good as necessary, or I'll go get some plastic stuff at Target and I'll throw stuff in there. And she's like, plastic bins to store things on a permanent basis? Um, so I realized that even though I was very resistant to this, it turned into the most home that I've ever had uh, outside of, you know, where I grew up. And and this this kind of built, put investing in the structure of a, of a space with having places where things go and beautifying things, it really made it much more pleasant. And and so when we were forced to leave, it was like, oh, man. Although I didn't regret it. I didn't say, see, we shouldn't have spent all this effort. No, it was awesome, and I, and I, I loved it. And so as we were moving into the, this new place, um, I, I still dragged my feet. I was still, you know, like, whatever you'd like. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Tell me what you want me to do. Yes, dear. Although I don't really say yes, dear. I'm just, um, and hopefully I don't say it with that expression, although sometimes I do, 
I occasionally have to check in and go, hey, I realized that I was being kind of not very supportive. So thank you for doing this. And right before this, I said, hey, I'm, a, I'm about to go online and, and thank you and, and, and talk about how I appreciate how you have helped me see the joy from temporary efforts. And what she pointed out to me, and what my friend Kiwi also pointed out to me was like, dude, Burning Man is just that. Like, why, why do you have such an issue with this? Because, I mean, every year, we spend massive amounts of time to set up something that only lasts for a week, and then we take it all down. And we put as much effort as possible to make it as cool as possible. Now, I'll admit that I am often the one that's, when we're building, I'm like, hey, that's good enough. That's good enough. And there are other people that are like, no, 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 no. It can be cooler. It can be better. It can be more polished. I don't like the way this looks. We're going to make this better. We're going to redo this. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yes, dear. Um, but thinking about my living space like Burning Man and thinking about this as not a burden, but as a canvas, like creating an outfit that, that I'm going to wear for Burn Week or wear for a performance, one-time performance. Is it not worth investing the time and effort to make it incredible? So as this place is taking shape and as I'm reluctantly saying yes to all the projects that Becca is suggesting, I'm finding myself really changing the way I think about it and really enjoying, I won't say enjoying the process because behind me is an Ikea piece of furniture that I put together over the course of like 36 hours this weekend. And I, if I said I enjoyed that process, that would be a, uh, inflated, uh, uh exaggeration of my, frustration. I mean, there was a time during when I was assembling it when, when I was so aware of how frustrated I was. There was one time when I needed a little bit of help, and so I needed help, like, putting the, the top on it. I couldn't do it that much. And I'm like, hey, Becca, can you help me move this? And so as, as soon as I did it and I realized that I had done something wrong, I'm like, oh, you know what? Okay, that's good. Thanks. I need, that's all the help I need. And she starts saying, well, what about... And I'm like, I don't need any more help now. I don't need any more help now. I don't need any more help now. I was like... Like, I'm so frustrated, but I am aware that this has nothing to do with you. This is all me, and I'm really trying to contain this in myself. This is, like, hopefully, um, uh, I, I'm not infecting you with this feeling I'm having. Uh, unfortunately, because she was the one that encouraged me to get this dresser, she did feel guilt, so live and learn. But she was so right. I now have a space for all the things that I had in boxes and bins and shoved into things, and now there's a space for them. Of course, uh, there's also a whole bunch of screws that were used incorrectly, and this could topple at any moment, but temporary, right? Hooray, temporary. So I'm, um, you know, especially now when we are living in a time when we are confined to our homes more than ever before, this effort towards creating uh, a beautiful living space or a, an organized living space is it just seems to make so much sense to me and and I, and now and as as I'm in it and appreciate it and enjoying it it I find myself looking back at the way I've been with this like huh that's like I'm I'm so grateful for this kind of forced eye-opening um, because I, I couldn't I couldn't see why it was worth it until I could see why it was worth it and I'm gonna try to apply that with more things you know there's a lot of things that I get very I apply this like as minimal office uh, excuse me as minimal effort as possible to get to what's good enough with dishwashing with food prep with exercise with physical therapy with anything like like what I, I here, here's here's what is what is required what's the 
least I need to do to be good enough. And uh, it was interesting when I when I posted that I had made a mistake on the IKEA drawer, or and honestly, I'm gonna say it's not. This is not my fault. The the way they describe these two different pieces online, they're black and white. They look almost identical, and black and white, almost identical. The way that you were could tell them apart according to their drawing is some of them came in a plastic pouch and some of them did not. That's how they designated it. But when you're going through the directions, like I didn't... And anyway, my point is Ikea. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's your reputation to like, you don't have a big military in, is it Sweden? Uh, but you're slowly breaking our will through your Ikea furniture. Uh, anyway, I, I posted online. I'm like, hey, I messed up this step. I don't I don't know if it's going to affect the structural integrity. Should I keep going? And almost everyone said, start over, start over, start over, start over, start over, start over, start over. And I said, fuck that. Fuck that. Is it going to be good enough? Luckily, I think it is good enough. Except for, I see these cool black dots right here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, this is a, a piece of felt that I got at the hardware store to cover up the metal piece that was supposed to be on the inside. So that's just cosmetic. So every time I look at it, I can go, hey, there's an example of my inability to follow IKEA directions. Or it's an opportunity to think of how clever I can be to overcome obstacles. I don't know. My point is that the effort is worth it. And I'm trying to remember that now so that when that story comes up in the future of like, eh, why bother? I can remember because that's what life is. Life is a journey filled with lots of temporary experiences. And feeling pride in where you are and what you do and what you create because of the effort that you put into it is significant. So I'm really working on the, the migrating from a good enough mindset to a do what it takes mindset. Doesn't mean everything has to be perfect, but if it's not enough to make me feel good, whether it's an artistic creation or a piece of writing or a video or whatever, um, what will it take to make it good enough? No, not good enough. I gotta work on this. Sometimes I have a, an outline of what I'm gonna say and sometimes I just uh, start talking. So from good enough to whatever it takes. Yeah, I think that's what I said. So I'm looking forward to getting it cleaned up and showing pictures of uh, what we've done with the place. Luckily, our forest of beautiful plants is in the new place, and so that makes it feel alive and lovely and beautiful, and there's places to, to display some of my favorite um, figurines and collections from my travels and such. So. And you know what? If we have to move in four to six months, then we will have three months of appreciation of our space. And three months, that's a lot of time to be compromising. Three days is a long time to be compromising, but it's doable. Three months, put in the work, make it beautiful, because you're worth it. Maybe that's what it comes down to. Maybe I just need to make my good enough a lot higher. Well, thank you for letting me share. I'm eager to share this space, although it will have to be digital because you are not allowed in our home. Nothing that you did, merely CDC guides. 
Uh, thank you again. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I hope your space is beautiful. I hope you have crossed that line and drilled things into your walls and hung your pictures and organized your space because, yes, you are worth it. Thank you. I love you. If you are noticing my background, it's different than what it's been in the past. You might also notice some sounds in the background. We're in a new place and it is giving me much lessons. <laughs>